Hello everyone, it's Ray Dadswell here once again with All About Eastbourne, when I chat to people about voluntary agencies and charities around the area. Uh, today something a little bit different perhaps, and I'm in conversation with Arthur Cornell, and I have some questions for him. Good news for everyone. Now, what's that all about, Arthur? Yes, that's an interesting question, Ray, because Gideons historically have been in, in the United States where it began, were very much considered to almost be a church, whereas when they started here in the UK, they were a charity and therefore they come under the Charity Commission. And in 2010, the, the Charity Commission was required to comply with the legislation about the Equalities Act. And they went around, and I think they're still doing it, visiting all the charities to make sure that they're complying with the requirements of, of the Equalities Act. And here in the UK, there was no problem about us deciding that the, the, the Gideons who were men and the, the ladies who had historically been called something else, there was no reason why they shouldn't be all seen as Gideons. But in order to change our constitution, because the organization that started Gideons is, is very much a, a men's organization with, with ladies, or I think almost in a secondary role, although I have to be careful how I express that. I so. Here in this country, we had no problem at all, because if you go into a school and you take a little team with you, you don't say, these are my auxiliaries, you say, we are the Gideons. And that's, that meant that we had to change our name and that's how we became good news for everyone, because when we couldn't comply with the requirements of the international Gideons, then uh, they didn't allow us to use their name. Well, thank you for that background. Just how long has Gideon's stroke good news for everyone been running? Oh, not the, the Gideons began, I can take you very quickly through three dates. In, in 1898, there were two traveling salesmen, commercial travelers, who were very interested in trying to support Christians who were spending a lot of time on their own, traveling around in hotels, and they wanted to provide them with some sense of friendship and fellowship with one another. They, they started to talk about supporting each other. And then a year later, three men got together and decided that they would set up the, the, this group of support and call it the Gideons. And they did that because Gideon was marked by his humility, faith and obedience, they felt. And the invitation was sent out across the, UK, the USA at that time. And they, they had 600 members in the first year. And then in 1903, an American Gideon was visiting England, and he discovered that the association, the Christian Association for Commercial Travelers over here were already beginning to put Bibles into hotels. And they went back to America and said, this is what the association is doing over there. And consequently, the idea of putting Bibles into hotels actually came from the UK. But we were all working, obviously, together. And since then, of course, the Bibles go into far more places than hotels. So could you estimate roughly how many Bibles and have gone into hotels, testaments have gone into schools? That's a tall order, I'm sure. Yes. A rough idea. Well, I, I can only give you a, a key statistic is that across the world, the, the Gideons International would give out a million copies of scripture every five days. It was at one time seven days, but in recent years, it went down to five. And here in the UK, I can't give you um, the actual number because due to the pandemic, we, we are building up our stocks of New Testament, particularly for schools, but it is not quite so easy to visit schools now because of the pandemic, and we're only slowly making our way back in. So it'd be wrong for me to try and give you an actual number. But across the years, since the Gideons have, and now good news have been operating in the UK, it's millions, absolutely millions. Marvellous. Well, I myself, in the work that I do, have been able to uh, make use of Gideons, if you like, and continue to do so. 
so very much appreciated. Yeah, so hotels and schools, have you ever been refused? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And all the, all the, the distributions are voluntary. There are some schools that are a bit nervous about having New Testaments in schools, but they are also, of course, given out now in uh, hospitals, in care homes. During the pandemic, the, the demand for them in, prayer, in, in care homes has actually gone through the roof. There's a huge number been given out in the last two years. But of course, the, the Gideon Bible gets in strange places. If you remember the moon landing way back in the 60s, and there was one of the pilots who read, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And would you believe it? He was using a Gideon Bible. And so consequently now, all sorts of associations and clubs can apply to good news for everyone to have a, a New Testament with their, with, with their badge on so that it's a kind of a, a part of a membership exercise, if you like, and it's done with golf clubs. They're starting to do it with football clubs, but it has been done with reg all the regiments in the British Army, and it's done with the police force. Recently, in the last 18 months or so, we've been presenting New Testaments to all the, the policemen in, in East Sussex, and we don't say, you've got to have one. We say, these are on offer, they're, they're available to you. And the most recent people that we've been talking to have been funeral parlors. We went in during the, the, this crisis that we've had and we discovered that they welcomed the Gideon magazine or the Good News magazine now, and they allowed us to leave a few testaments and a calling card so that when they need more. And their big question was, what does it cost? And we said, well, it's our gift to your situation, at which point that, that there was just no problem at all. Just a little comment in passing, that astronaut who read from his Gideon Bible on the moon, did he leave it? No, I don't think he left it there, but I can tell you that the first thing that they did when they landed on the moon was to share communion together. <laughs> My word, that's a little bit that we didn't have from the media, I don't think back in 1969 or whenever right. it was, right. almost before my time. But you're talking about making these Bibles and Testaments as gifts in yes. hotels, hospitals, schools, and so on. So how is the work financed? Uh, again, that's a good question. The, the people related with Good News, there are first of all the members of Good News who pay an annual subscription for their, the administration of the exercise, and then they give gifts during the course of the year. And then we have a wonderful group of people called the Friends of Good News for Everyone. And we now have a special New Testament for them. So if they want to carry around a little New Testament to give to a neighbor or a relative or something like that, then if the opportunity is there and they think somebody would be interested, they can do it. So the funding comes from Gideon's themselves. It comes from the Friends and it comes from gifts uh, from, from legacies. And I think those are the three main areas from which we draw our finance. So I guess in that case, you cut your coat according to the cloth, as it were. The funds that you have in hand, you're able to print more copies of Testaments and Bibles to give away. Yes. So your volunteers, do they need any particular background or training? No, they they originally started over here as, as businessmen. But now we work very much with business people and professional men, because there is a particular way in which you approach people. For example, uh, groups of hotels, the Premier Inn and one or two of the other uh, hotel groups actually come to us now and say, we're decorating our rooms, can you renew our Bibles? And we're very happy to do that. But there is a kind of business style of negotiation, whether it's working with uh, hotels or whether it's working with schools, whether it's approaching a hospital or a care home, that there's a kind of professional manner of doing that. But we now have, there are tradespeople who are very professional, who are joining the, uh, the Gideons as well too. So it's open to anyone who has a, 
you know, a heart for the gospel and senses uh, something of God's call to be available to share God's word when the opportunity arises. Excellent. I suppose it's true to say that some people might be offended to discover in the locker in their hotel room or some other such place that there's a Bible and wonder why it's there. Maybe there's some feedback, even kickback to Gideon's good news or even to the hotel as a result. Yes, there, there, there is one group of hotels that won't allow us to put them, uh, to put Bibles there. But if I give you a, a story which illustrates it, it, in a place like Eastbourne, people come down to Eastbourne to commit suicide. And some of them don't like to commit suicide in the dark. So they come down in the, the late evening after they finished work. They go into a hotel room and they stay in the hotel room overnight and commit suicide the following day. And we had a, a lady who came down to do exactly that. And she got into her room and there wasn't a paper or a magazine or anything in the room. So she went around opening the drawers and she found a Gideon Bible in the bedside cabinet. And she thought, it's years since I've left and read any about this, read anything about this. And in the front of the Gideon Bible, there's a series of what we call helps, which is in life situations, which part of the Bible might be able to help you with your particular issue. And she sat there for the whole of the evening once she'd had her meal and got to the point where she said, I can't do this. I really can't do this. I've discovered something in this book that I have never known before. The fact that God loves me, that Christ died for me, and that he wishes to share my life with me. And she wrote to the Gideons to tell us her story. And that doesn't only happen in, in hotels, it even happens in prisons. You will know that in prisons, there are visitors times. And we, we were told the story of the man who sat in his prison and in, in, in his cell, and in the cell, there was a, a, a Gideon Bible. And one morning he'd got up and he'd seen the Bible and he was angry. And he picked up the Bible and he threw it at his cell door. And uh, he said to God, if you're really there, he said, send somebody to see me. Nobody ever comes to visit me in prison. And at two o'clock in the afternoon, the officer was going around with people who had visitors to their cell. And he was listening to this. And then there was a knock on this, his door. And the officer said to him, you have a visitor. He said, no, I don't, I never have visitors. He said, yes, you have a visitor. So they opened the door and they let this gentleman into his cell. And the first thing that the prisoner said to him was, who sent you to see me? And the gentleman replied, God sent me. At that moment, he looked at his Bible that he'd thrown at the back of the door and he went over and picked it up and he sat down and talked with the, with the Gideon. So the, the Bibles appear in, in what we call the traffic lanes of life. That's our purpose, to put them where people who are in need can hear the story and understand its significance. Excellent. Have you, have you had more encouraging letters or responses uh, from people during the past couple of years of COVID and lockdown? Oh yes, we now at the present moment when we're outside of our mobile van, as it, we, do, we do have a table in which we put New Testaments. And now, so, now, you, now, now you're talking, sorry to interrupt Arthur, you're talking about street pastors. I am, it's the street yes. pastors who use the Testaments out in the street, yes, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. quite right. And you get also other people who use the Testaments find that they have stories as well. For example, I'm with a group of people at uh, something like quarter past three in the morning <laughs> and a young man crosses the road and he says to me, my mother's a street pastor, you know? And I said to him, oh, that's rather nice. I said, so what sort of background do you have? Oh, he said, I went to church. He said, and uh, I joined the band, played at the band in the church. But he said, I got to university and I kind of lost it all. And I said to him, where are you now? He, well, he said, I, I don't really know. 
I said to him, how long is it since you've read the Bible? Oh, he said, a year or two now. I said, if I gave you a New Testament, would you <laughs> think about reading it again? And he said, yes, I would. And if I tell you, you know, about 20 past three in the morning, I left this guy underneath the lamppost trying to read <laughs> his, his yeah. New Testament as I disappeared into the crowds. You know? So there's all sorts of situations and other people, we mentioned people like the golf clubs, and the football clubs, which are now appointing chaplains. So to have New Testaments, particularly with your crest of your club on it or something like that, means that this is something that is part of the actual organization, it's become part of the organization. And with some of the situations that are arising in our culture at the moment, to have chaplains in those clubs with the New Testaments available is, is becoming increasingly useful. Of course, I use them with my air cadets, as you well know. Absolutely. And so it's not, not just hotels, although historically, I suppose I'm thinking that's where it all started. But you're going much farther afield. What do you see as the future? Anywhere that you haven't been yet and you're hoping to go? Well, uh, there are one or two places, Ray, where you've, you've got us in from the work that you do. Because if mm -hmm. I think of the theatres and there are another group of people who like the original commercial travelers could be rather lonely people because you're traveling from theater to theater on a tour somewhere around the country you're not in a place for many days but to find in a dressing room that there is a bible there that you can help yourself to that you can take it and and, and look at it and then you can obviously uh, ask for one yourselves that those sort of opportunities are beginning to open up and th this is why we, we mentioned the fact that when we first started to do the badge ones, we started with the military mm. and with the military regiments. And some of them were, were overseas. And a brigadier was in India where there was half a battalion and the chaplain there had just arranged for a, a crested New Testament to be given to the troops out there. And the brigadier said, where have these come from? And they explained the situation. And the response of the brigadier was, the other half of this battalion is in Germany. Could you order New Testaments for the other half of the battalion? So it kind of spreads, really, once it gets going. And whether it's regiments, police forces, sports clubs, whatever it is, if you've got 200 people in your group, it's possible for you to say, we could have a New Testament with our badge or our crest on it or whatever, and make Absolutely. sure that people have access to that resource. My ears pricked up a little bit there when you mentioned travellers, because there's some story in my family that grandmother was from a gypsy background. Do you have testaments specifically for the travelling community? That's a very good question. To which right, I that's, a play, that's, a way, that's a way to go. <laughs> but um, I will make it my business uh, to find out. I think there's a possibility that somebody has spotted that, whether they've done anything about it or not. But because of the changeover from Gideon's to the, the whole idea of good news for everyone, there are some delays in some of the things going sure. through. But it wouldn't at all surprise me to discover if HQ didn't say, oh, if you know where there is a group, we can arrange for that to be available. My last question, Arthur, what is your favourite Bible passage that you come back to again and again? Do you know that, that's very difficult? Mm -hmm. That's very difficult. I, if, if I may, I'm just going to give you a single verse, which relates to the fact that at some point, <clears throat> when I encounter the Christian faith, I have to ask, what should be my response? <clears throat> and the words that come to mind, which the Apostle Paul wrote, and I asked myself the question, what did a, what did a guy like this do to find himself wanting to uh, interact and have a relationship with Jesus. And he wrote these words, the son of God loved me and gave himself for me. And I guess that's even slightly more personal than John 3.16, where it tells me God loves the world, but to discover that God loves me. Wow, that's something special. Excellent. It's been brilliant talking to you, Arthur and picking up some more information. And hopefully anybody 
listening to this podcast in due course might look into Gideon's uh, and still think of it that way. Good news for everyone on the website. The website's up and running, no doubt. Yes. And it, it will give all the details that people want. So we're about to sign off, as I have to do, and to say thank you once again. Thank you to anybody listening in. My name is Ray Dadswell. This has been Eastbourne.online. Thanks to my team, Chris Dabbs and the podcast studio for putting this podcast together. And don't forget, you can subscribe, listen again, or catch up with any of my previous interviews online through Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or on your Alexa, or wherever you get your podcasts from. So thanks again, and see you soon.